Now, Lauren, I have been saying for years uh, that you are one of the most lied about people in the world. I mentioned it in my intro as well. Uh, would you agree with that sentiment? <laughs> in the world. Uh, you know, I'm probably, I, I reckon there's a lot more people that have been lied about more than me, but I'm probably in the top 5%. I'll say that <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Maybe 1%. Yeah, I'm up there. <laughs> yeah, I, because yeah, some, it's, it, it's, it's appalling, isn't it? And, and some of the lies that people tell about you are completely unhinged. I mean, we, we've all seen the stuff of whether you call it a white supremacist and a white nationalist and anti-immigration and all of that stuff. Anyone who spends five minutes reading your stuff or watching your videos will know that's not the case. Some of the lies are unhinged. I mean, I've seen at least one person on Twitter who accused you of shooting at a refugee boat and then laughing as it sunk, which is a total distortion of the facts. I mean, how does it get to that point? Well, to be clear, it was multiple refugee ships. They were all children <laughs> and puppies, and I used a torpedo, <laughs> just if we're going to get the facts straight here, all right? Um, yeah, no, that one's always a fun one. I'm not I'm not joking. That, that was, uh, like, there were multiple articles that reported I shot a flare gun at... <laughs> refugees. <laughs> there were no refugees in the vicinity, first of all. It was not a firing flare gun. One that was an Italian article, I guess there was something lost in translation. They said it was a torpedo. <laughs> so some of these people that have gotten these lies wrong, you know, unfortunately, they just believe and trust the media. They have outsourced their own thinking and perception of the world to to journalists. And that's the consequence of doing that is believing these very silly things. And, you know, uh, also people just they they need cartoonized villains. It's really hard to hate other humans. Once you've actually sat down with them, heard their life story, you know, their experiences, why they actually believe the things they believe. Um, most people, you can actually understand how they got where they are. Even even Antifa members. Like, I've met people that are ex-Antifa members that they'll explain to me how, how their thinking got so warped. And you're like, oh, okay, I can actually see that. Like, you were in an abusive household that had this, like, unhinged view of evangelical Christianity or whatever. That was nothing normal, remotely normal to the average Christian. And that kind of jaded you to that and pushed you further to one side. And then you changed. You can really understand people when you humanize them and sit down with them. Uh, but that's not really politically conducive to selling papers. That's not conducive to getting a bunch of money for your super PAC or your activist organization, the ADL, SBLC, whatever it might be. You need villains. They are desperate for them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's very difficult to sue media outlets, as I'm sure you know, especially in the Western world. There's a massive burden of proof. You go to a, a lawyer, which I have, regarding some of the outlets that have written things about me holding flare guns or being a white supremacist and whatnot. And it's like, all right, we're going to need a $100,000 down payment, uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, just to return it. So the, it's a very strange world where I made a video on this a while ago called Sainthood for Sale. Only the rich get to be able to have the right to protecting their reputation in this brave new world we're living in. Truly, if you are a poor person that decides to speak up, the media can slander you five ways to Sunday, and you'll never be able to do anything about it. God forbid you're one of these 17-year-olds that someone found a TikTok video of you saying a naughty word and you lose your Harvard scholarship, mm. your life's ruined forever. If you came from a very wealthy, connected Democrat family or something, they would have had that story smushed before it even saw the light of day, right? So there's this very weird truth class system that exists, not to use Marxist terminology, but uh, <laughs> that's what it is. And funny enough, all the people that claim to be Marxists really like to utilize it against the working class critiquing them. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. All the all the sort of university academics that I've encountered to call themselves Marxists really hate the working class. So it's, it's another interesting mm -hmm. cognitive dissonance. Now, Speaking of lies, one of the biggest lies or series of lies ever told about you was from a left-wing journalist writing for The Atlantic, which is an awful lefty publication, named Daniel Lombroso. Now, you and I spoke about this at the time, um, but just to give the viewers a bit of context, he told you he was doing a piece on you and pretended to be your friend for a long time to extract personal information. 
Then he constructed a totally false reality that you were this dreadful alt-right white nationalist pick me woman, uh, both in a 2020 article for The Atlantic and also a documentary he made, which was supposedly about the far right. Um, and that included, it included you, Mike Cernovich and Richard Spencer. Yeah. Now, first of all, putting you and Mike Cernovich, who was really just another pretty stock standard conservative, in the same basket as Richard Spencer, who is an actual white, uh, white nationalist and a racist, is as wrong as it is offensive. But it was the personal betrayal from Daniel Lombroso that really took its toll on you, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, to me, I, I trusted him as a journalist because I didn't think it was humanly possible to falsely befriend someone for four years just to get a story that ended up flopping. Like it was supposed to, this, this movie, White Noise, they, I remember seeing the title come out and it had the OK hand sign on it, which was a meme. Mm. Oh my goodness. And uh, they called it White Noise to kind of insinuate, right? Oh, it's just static. You're not even saying anything. It's just white people saying garbage. Uh, so so no, no serious analysis of anything that myself or Mike could be saying that has any weight to it, right? Just a total garbage hit piece. But um, th there was never a moment that I thought someone had the capability to pretend to be someone's friend for four years. I mean, I've done pieces where I've interviewed someone for an hour and then I've released the interview and it didn't make them look very good. And, you know, it, it's sometimes that even when I've gone and done streeters and it's been someone's own words that make them look bad because they say something insane, I still kind of feel bad about publishing that, right? I'm like, mm. uh, someone's it's not their best moment, right? And maybe they'll change their mind in the future, evolve as a human being. It never feels good publishing someone that's publishing something that's going to make someone else look bad. Now, if it were someone that I were very good friends with and trusted and deliberately cut down to make them look as horrible as possible, I, I truly didn't think this was in the scope of uh, something a human could do that seemed relatively normal, but that was what Daniel did. And it was for the purpose of trying to extend and advance his own career. And it didn't work. Uh, it wasn't a very good movie. It was supposed to go to Sundance Film Festival. It was supposed to go on Netflix. Both of them rejected it. It ended up getting optioned and they sold it off to Apple TV or something where it was pretty unpopular. I haven't met a whole lot of people who have watched it. So uh, I think Daniel, because they spent so much money with The Atlantic on making this film and couldn't find anything that shocking that Mike or I did. I think the most shocking thing they got in the whole movie, four years of following me around, was um, I said something along the lines of democracy is like gang rape. And they had <laughs> cut out my whole explanation where I was like, yeah, it's, you know, the exact same founder statement of it's like, nine wolves and one sheep voting on what to have for dinner. It, it can be a very awful thing. You've seen dictators, you know, Nazis, democratically elected. Hmm. And this is a, a horrific thing that has led to the deaths of many people. So we can't always acquiesce and just say democracy is good. They cut out that whole explanation, put democracy is like gang rape, and then bam, that's, that's the most shocking thing they got in the entire movie. So you spend four years following someone around trying to expose modern day you know, Nazism and the revival of the Fourth Reich or whatever, and you get essentially nothing. So Daniel has to then go and try to do a piece for the Atlantic so he can at least claim, I didn't waste my four years. He makes this piece, the alt-right's most famous woman. I remember it coming up on my phone, trending on Apple and seeing my face there and being like, oh my goodness, here we go. And it was truly shocking how much this man lied in the piece. I was able to get a legal team to contact the Atlantic and point out some of the lies that he put in, in the article. Some of them were so blatantly, obviously false mm. that the Atlantic even issued an apology to me, at least privately. <laughs> uh, one of them, this is just an example. Um, he had said I was stealing my subscribers' money to go stay at fancy chateaus in Paris, and I just wined and dined myself there on all of the donations I got. 
No, uh, the because of the migrant crisis, all of the hotels in Paris were like a thousand euros because they had so many uh, Africans staying in them. We couldn't <laughs> find anywhere to stay. We wanted to get the cheapest option. So Daniel from the Atlantic calls me and says, hey, I found a chateau for only a hundred euros <gasps> an hour outside of France. If you want to come stay here, I said, amazing. It'll be a bit of a drive, but we can save money. So I went and I booked the same place he booked and recommended for me which he then proceeded to put in his article as me vacationing at fancy chateaus and drinking wine oh my on my gosh. subscribers' money. I was able to send those texts to the Atlantic and they took it out of the article. But all of the other things that I didn't have exact proof for, that even though I had proved that this man was a liar and was willing to lie blatantly, mm. despite proof, uh, all of the things that were just he said, she said, they just left in the article. And there's some pretty atrocious nonsense. 